I'm inviting on stage the CEO of Genesis Energy to hand the final award for tonight. So please uh, come on board, uh, Akinoli. Global Thinkers Forum 2016 Award for Excellence in Promoting Peace and Collaboration is awarded to the Right Honourable the Lord Alderdice, Chairman, Centre for Democracy and Peacebuilding, Belfast. As leader of the Alliance Party of Northern Ireland, Lord Alderdice played a significant role in the talks on Northern Ireland, including negotiation of the 1998 Good Friday Agreement. He was the first speaker of the new Northern Ireland Assembly and on retirement in 2004 was appointed to the Independent Monitoring Commission, tasked with closing down terrorist operations and overseeing normalisation of security in Northern Ireland. Please welcome on stage Lord John Alderdice. Highness, Excellencies, my Lords, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's an enormous honour and pleasure to join you this evening. But I've been given a slightly difficult task. Elizabeth said, talk about making peace in the world, but you've got five minutes. <laughs> but it's a good thing sometimes to be asked to concentrate your mind and your thoughts. And as I thought about it, and I thought about what the minister was saying in his excellent opening address, it reminded me of my own coming into this kind of work in Northern Ireland when things were beginning to break down into violence in the late 1960s. This is a thinker's forum. And the thinking of that time was that people operated in their own rational self-interest. That was what, for example, Henry Kissinger believed. It was what the uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve believed about the markets. It's what many people in political science believe, but it didn't make any sense to me. Why? Because I was living in a part of the world where people were behaving in a very self-destructive way as a whole community. We weren't the wealthiest part of the world by any means, but in global terms, we weren't poor. We had all sorts of problems with our democracy, but we were a long way from being in the difficulties of anti-democratic authoritarian systems that were the case in other parts of the world. And yet in these other places, which had in many ways many more difficulties in social and economic and political terms, they didn't have an ongoing terrorist campaign. They didn't have intractable conflict. We did. So for me, the question was, how can we think about things in a new way which helps us to understand why a whole community of people might behave in ways that are not in their own best interests, in destructive and damaging ways? Because let's be clear, when we get into wars, whether they're civil wars or international wars or wars on terror or global wars, they're horrible and destructive. They destroy people, they destroy prospects, they destroy property, and they destroy the possibility for the next generation. And as I began to think about it and to start to engage with others, because of course if you're going to try to understand what's going on in a divided community, you've got to start building relationships with other people who come from a different background and culture and understanding from yourself. And what became very clear to me was, first of all, this was fundamentally not about a border. It wasn't even about social and economic issues. It was fundamentally about disturbed, historic relationships between groups of people. Between Protestants and Catholics, Unionists and Nationalists in the North. Between people in the North and people in the South. Between people in Britain and people in Ireland. Between whole communities, not individual people. Lots of people would say, but I've got very good friends who are Catholics, or very good friends who are Protestants, or very good friends who are English or Irish, or whatever. That's not the point. The point is, that whole groups of people don't get on together even when individuals do. 
And so when I went into trying to understand that, and I went into medicine and psychiatry and psychoanalysis, I began to discover that all of those things about individuals are really very important, but actually there's a psychology of large groups that take us way beyond that. And while for us as individuals our experiences of the past go on for the whole of our life and they make up our personality and our attitude and our way of being in the world, for the communities that we come from, it's not personality, it's identity, it's culture. Our way of being in the world as communities, because of our background and experience and beliefs and principles and so on, takes us to very different places. And if we're going to find a way of resolving our problems, we've got to understand how we work at these disturbed historic relationships. What leads to disturbed relationships? Well, of course, we had lots of experiences of our own in the past. But one of the things I've tried to do over the last number of years is distill out from that experience of working in a peace process at home those things which were to do with our own experience, our own history, our own politics, and, re and, and leave out open to others those things which are part of the general common human condition. Or to put it in another way, are there things out of our experience which are relevant in any other place where there's intractable conflict? And the answer is yes. There are three things. In every situation I've gone to, anywhere in the world, where there's been an intractable conflict, there's always been at least one group of people that felt humiliated and disrespected. It wasn't a question of whether they had money or whether they had social benefits or whatever. Those things are important. Addressing those issues is a moral imperative. Dealing with problems of education and poverty and so on, dealing with the situation for women and young people, these are a moral imperative, but they don't generally drive people to violence. But humiliation does. If you and I have a conversation and we disagree with each other, that's fine. We can have a glass of wine and it's all forgotten. But if I say something in response to you, which is humiliating and disrespecting to you in front of your friends and colleagues, should you not meet me for another 20 or 30 years, if either of us are both around then, the first thing you will remember is not even what I said, but how I made you feel. And you will find it very difficult to either forget it or forgive it. And if it's true of individuals over decades, it's true in communities over hundreds of years. And if you deal with the current here and now social and economic and political problems, don't expect that the feelings that community has about how they were treated 150 or 350 years ago will just disappear like snow off a ditch. They don't. They have to be worked at and it's not at all easy. So the first thing is humiliation and disrespect. And the second thing is a sense of unfairness. I don't say injustice because that's got a, a kind of a legal feel to it. When one of my little boys would come to tell me about what had happened, he wouldn't say to me, Stephen's been unjust to me, Daddy. He would say, Daddy, it's not fair. But feel it in here. And what happens is that there are people around the world and they feel they've been treated deeply, deeply unfairly. And you have to be very careful about it because sometimes you do things with the intention of making things better and you can make it worse. In Northern Ireland, things broke down not at the point where things were economically at their worst, but when things were improving. So why did they break down? Because it was the end of the first generation of Catholic people who had been given education through to tertiary level education without having to pay for it. And whilst in the past there was discrimination which they could put down to being not educated so well, once they were educated and there was still discrimination, then they got really angry and said, this is not fair. It's not justifiable. It's not right. It's not fair. So you can give people a whole bunch of education and think that's going to sort things out, but if they're not able to have the jobs and the opportunities after they've had the education, you may have actually made the situation worse. So you've got to do both. And if people have a sense of unfairness, whatever it's about, and they can't find a way of resolving it, that's really toxic. And that's the third thing, that people in many of these situations have desperately tried to find a peaceful, a democratic, a gradualist way of resolving the problem, and they keep getting knocked back. And eventually a generation arises that said, we're not going to have it anymore. And if we can't resolve this peacefully, we're going to do something about it. And it, the violence, when it comes, is not strategic. It's not that people sit down and work out, for example, well, 
Anyway, let's look at a whole bunch of terrorist campaigns and see how successful they are. Why? Because if you look at that, the vast majority of terrorist campaigns do not succeed. They don't succeed for the individuals that get involved in it. They don't succeed even for the cause that they have espoused. So why do they do it? They do it because they are so angry, so furious, that they just want to pull the whole house down around them. You know what it's like sometimes? You remember what you, what you said whenever you got really annoyed as a kid? I'm going to die and then you'll be sorry. As though somehow or another you'd be sitting up there looking down and saying, no, I told you. Or like the hypochondriac's headstone, you know? Now will you believe me? But of course, the tr <laughs> that's a quick table over there. <laughs> but of course the reality is that when a whole bunch of people begin to feel that political, intellectual, gradualist development won't work for them, that that humiliation and disrespect and unfairness will continue somewhere along the lines. Somebody starts getting violent, and then we're all very imitative creatures. And then it grows and it spreads like an epidemic. And we're living at a time when there is just such an epidemic of all sorts of distress and disadvantage and anger and indeed violence. We are breaking down. It's very serious indeed. For almost everybody, I guess, in this room, globalization is an exciting thing. It's, it's enlivening, it's enriching, it's encouraging. You want to trade, you want to travel, you want to move about, you want to meet with different people, you want to see different things, go to different cultures, experience different food. That's about 17% of the population. For a very large percentage of the population, these things are disturbing, they're troubling, they're frightening, they make changes in my, in my identity, changes in my place, in my culture. I'm not sure that I want, I pull back. And if we don't understand the anxiety that that kind of thing creates, then we drive on and we do things which actually make it worse, even when we think we're making it better. So when we talk about being a thinker's forum, the thing that is most important for us to focus upon is not thinking and understanding and deepening our appreciation of rationality. We need to apply our minds to understanding the irrational parts of us, the emotional parts of us, the passions that drive us for good and for ill. This evening is about the inspiration of passions for good that Elizabeth has encouraged in so many. But we have all seen people who tap into the emotions that do damage and harm. We have seen it in this continent twice in the last century. And we see it developing and spreading across our world from the Middle East out. We desperately have to find a way of understanding the passions that are driving that in order to suck out from them the poison that is destroying our world and find a way in which we can build better relationships. Relationships of respect, treating people with fairness, even more than equality, treating people with fairness, and enabling people who feel there is no chance of changing things peacefully to understand there are peaceful ways, constructive ways, of building new, healthy relationships across our world. It says in the good book that a strand can be easily broken, but a rope made of three strands bound together will not easily be broken. And when we are together supporting each other, we can stand against a great deal. Thank you very much.